Hello everyone, welcome back to Apex Hours and the series of Salesforce development. Today we will be discussing about trigger handler pattern in Salesforce. One of the very interesting topics, when we use triggers, we have to make sure that we use triggers effectively. So how we can do that is what we will be discussing today. But before we deep dive into today's topic, here is a short introduction about me. My name is Kathy Mehta. I am working as senior Salesforce developer. I am also the co-founder of one of the prestigious events that has happened in India, which is WIT Drumming. I'm also a proud Salesforce marketing champion, group leader of one of the active groups in East India, Salesforce WIT Kolkata, and also the co-founder of Crazy Cloud YouTube channel, where we focus on to learn Salesforce very easily. These are my QR codes. If you have any questions or just want to connect with me, you're free to scan these codes and connect with me. So the agenda for today is understanding what exactly these trigger handler patterns are and how we can implement these. So a trigger, as we know by now, that a trigger is an APIC script that executes before or after data manipulation events such as before or after records, or maybe insert, update, or delete. Triggers are written to perform tasks that can't be done by using you know, point-and-click tools in Salesforce. So Salesforce newbies often jump into writing multiple triggers on the same object. And then they later realize that they can't control which trigger runs first. A simple trigger handler framework can control the order of execution. It's simply a rule of keeping strictly one trigger per object. So the trigger handler pattern is a design pattern used in Salesforce development to manage and organize your Apex triggers. The Salesforce trigger handler framework is a lightweight Apex trigger framework. And the trigger handler pattern is the best practice for managing your Apex triggers in the Salesforce platform. This pattern basically helps you ensure the trigger code is well organized, efficient, and maintainable. Now the question arises, how we can implement these trigger handlers? So if we follow best practices, there should be only one trigger per S object. And in that case, there would be quite a different business logic you would be needing to implement in the Apex trigger according to your different scenarios. Apex trigger handler are, you know, classes written to put the business logic code of the trigger and keep the actual trigger free of the business logic. It reduces um, the complexity of the code and uh, makes it easier to read the logic in the class. And then the trigger helper class is a design pattern to encapsulate the logic of your Apex trigger. This approach helps to organize and modularize code, making it more readable, maintainable, and scalable. The helper class stores the business logic, which again can be reused for other services. It is a design pattern, which makes it easy to maintain the code in the long term. There are different contexts, you know, in which you need to implement the logic in a trigger and for different requirements, the code would be complex. Hence, we have trigger handler in Salesforce. Consider the scenario in which you would have to perform different business logic on a single S object through a trigger. In one, in one which you need to use the new map and in another you would need to use the old map values. Both might be needed to work on and uh, let's say after update condition. In this case, your business logic would be the same but the values through which the process has to run on are different. So in this case, if you write the logic code inside the trigger only, it would create you know a huge mess and your code will also not be reusable. So to make your code reusable, you can easily create a different class, put your logic code inside a different class, and this class will be called as trigger handler. And then 
you can create a different class, call it in the trigger either directly if you have a static method or by creating an instance of that class. So that is how you can use trigger handlers in different scenarios. So let's move to one of the classes and see how exactly we have used the trigger handler pattern. So let's say for example, you have a field on on your S object, wherein you know you would want to do few things. So what exactly here happening is um, that the trigger contact name on account is configured to execute on the contact object. But on what um, what types or what executions it will happen on after insert, after update, after delete, and after undelete. So the trigger will first check if it is executing after this DML operation or not. If yes, then the trigger context indicates either an up insert, update, or undelete, and it will call a class. If you see, this is nothing but a class dot method name. And it is passing the trigger dot new records. And the other one is passing the trigger dot old records. So here, the actual logic for handling the trigger events is delegated to a class, which contains a method named as update contact on account. This method likely performs some actions related to updating associated records on either the um, you know, account object based on changes to the contact record. So in summary, the trigger is responsible for invoking a handler class method to update associated records on the account object based on changes to contact records, but only when after the specific DML operations have occurred. So this is how you can basically call your handler class from the trigger object. And this way you have just one trigger on your S object and you can basically not have any kind of logic written in this trigger. So the logic will be written in this class, which is nothing but contact name on account class. Now the contact name on account class contains a static method named as update contact on account, which is invoked by the contact name on account trigger. So let's break down what this method does. This method takes a list of contact records as a parameter. This list represents the contact records that were, you know, kind of affected by the trigger operation. Then it iterates over the list of contacts and collects the account IDs associated with them into a set. The set is used to query related account records. It then performs a query to retrieve account records along with their related contact records. And then I'm using a subquery as well. This query retrieves, you know, the account ID along with the IDs and names from the contacts associated with each contact. It then iterates over the queried account records and constructs a new list of account records. For each account, it concatenates the name of all the associated kind of, if I use a concatenation like this here, it will, it is concatenating um, each of the, you know, um, names of all the associated contacts into a string. And finally, if I have any kind of uh, DML operations to be performed, if the list, let's say the list of the account records needs to be updated, uh, then I can have the update operation to update the account records with the concatenated contact names. So in summary, this class and method are responsible for updating your account records with a summary of contact names associated with each contact after your contact DML operations are kind of, uh, you know, performed or operated. 
So this is how you use trigger handler pattern to make your um, code or uh, to make your triggers uh, used effectively. So the trigger handler pattern is your key to unlocking cleaner, more efficient and maintainable code. By embracing the best practice, you can you know, elevate your Salesforce development skills and confidently tackle even the most complex triggers. So this was all about the trigger handler pattern and this is how you can use this trigger handler pattern uh, to make your code reusable, have good maintainability and uh, to sustain in a longer term of Salesforce development process in any of your projects or use cases. So that's all for today. I hope this was informative for you all. Thank you all.